Hey everyone, it's Megan with AboveReviewStudio.com. I have a really fun project that I'm going to be working on today and I wanted to share it with you guys because I think it could maybe inspire a few of you. My fingers are crossed that it works. I have no idea what I'm getting myself into and this could end up taking me hours upon hours to actually put together, but I thought let's give it a try anyway. Um, I just moved out to Wisconsin, which many of you may know. It's a temporary move. I'm not staying here in this place forever. I have the kids with me and just working through some things, so it's all good. Um, but we didn't. I didn't move my dining room table out with me, and I ended up getting one through a friend. They had it just sitting around, um, and it was. It's broken. It has the ceramic um, tile top, and it's not broken. I shouldn't say that. it's a perfectly great table. I really like the table actually. But the ceramic top is old, and there's some chips in it, and so this one tile in particular is broken. And instead of just replacing that one tile, I thought. Let's turn this into a full DIY project. Again, I have no idea how this is going to turn out. My kids aren't home right now. They're um, at a parade and they're having a great fun weekend. So I thought it's time to attack. And I was going to actually work and do like card and scrapbooking videos for you guys. But I thought, you know, I can share this instead. And then I have a nice table that um, I sliced my finger on this once, gave it a little like, kind of paper cut kind of thing, and my daughter did as well. So I have to get this replaced. So what I did was I went over to Home Depot this morning, and I'm like trotting in there like, here I am, can somebody help me? Because <laughs> I don't have a clue. I actually bought a new hammer and a screwdriver to actually chisel this thing apart. And then I picked up this two-part glaze coat epoxy, and it's by Famowood, and it's this two-part high-gloss glass kind of finish and what I'm thinking I'm going to do is decorate this entire tabletop. I'm going to break out these tiles and decorate it with family photos and scrapbook pages and paper and embellishments and bottle caps and try to come up with some kind of cool design. Um, but I have to break out these tiles first. So I also picked up some super glue and I got everything that they said should work. I'm going to have to Mod Podge the bottom. And the only thing that I don't have, which they said you don't need, but if I get really bad air bubbles, I'm going to need to hit it with a torch. <laughs> this should be fun. <laughs> so I hope you guys stick with me through the process. I'll be checking in throughout. I'm not going to film the entire thing because, like I said, I think it's going to take me several hours. But I think this should be fun. So I'll check back in really soon. Wish me luck. All right, everyone, so here's my next check-in. I have a pile of stuff here. I just went through my scrapbooking stash and started pulling out stickers and embellishments like this key and a ton of photos and buttons, bottle caps. I pulled out some domino pieces from an incomplete set that I'm using for jewelry. I have puzzle pieces from missing uh, pieces of a puzzle. I pulled out some candies with like a font script on them. I pulled out some favorite paper, of course I pulled out some letter stickers so I could write some sentiments and phrases, and I'm just going to kind of see what comes together. I have been really, really struggling with do I want to make this look like one giant scrapbook page that it all coordinates, or do I really want it to be a collage, mod pod, mod podge, I'm using mod podge, <laughs> of stuff um, that really just is everything and with the pi pictures that I pulled out I have Christmas, I have baby, I have fun at the zoo, I have bathtub. so I really do have a collection of pictures that I think would be really cute on here. So I think that I'm just going to kind of see what speaks to me and comes together and what I'm going to do is glue everything down and seal it with Mod Podge. I have glitter Mod Podge and I have regular matte Mod Podge and I'm going to kind of mix them together to seal everything on the table before I do my glass epoxy coat. So wish me luck. Here I go at it again. So we'll just see what kind of comes together as I spread everything out. I think it's going to be really fun because I have words that really mean a lot like home and grateful, truth, faith, joy, enjoy. Um, I pulled out papers that aren't, I didn't want to be screaming bright, but I want it to color. So I pulled out some authentic paper that I think is beautiful. Um, the texture of this and everything is just gorgeous. So I think that all of this will just go together great as my, you know, kind of subtle background. I don't want anything too overpowering, like this wood green is really cool. And I'm just going to kind of piece it together and then put little metal embellishments. I have Tim Holtz tags. I don't know. We'll see how it comes together. I'm going to move everything off. 
so I'm not too worried if it doesn't come out perfect, I guess is what I'm getting at. I'm just, I'm just going with it. And I definitely want to center around these fake, oh, and I have this awesome piece from Moxie. This awesome piece of paper, it's from Moxie, and it's, um, it's a faith collection, and it says, The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is my strength of my life, whom shall I be afraid? I love this. It's like a big, huge scripted piece out of the Bible, and I think it's gorgeous. And then this one has a bunch of Bible verses on it. So I thought it'd be really cool to center the table like around this a little bit. And just see what happens. All right, here it goes. We're giving it a whirl. I'm going to start Mod Podging. Mod Podging, Mod Podging, whatever you call it, everything down. And I'm making a huge mess. So we will see if this all goes according to plan or if I just make a huge mess of this table and have to throw it out in the end. Okay, a note for those doing this, if anybody attempts this at home, something I would suggest is getting a really big sponge brush. And you might wanna take off the edges of the table. I don't know. I'm wondering if I should have done that now that I'm looking at this. Like I should have taped off the outer wood. But we'll see. This is much more of an experimental, here I go, I'm going for it, than it was a planned out, hey, you should redo your table. Get a brayer to roll out any air bubbles. That's something else you could do. making one hot mess. Okay. Y'all know that ink accessories kit I showed you? Well, I'm about to use it again. I'm gonna pull that squeegee out. Remember I said I didn't know what I'd use the squeegee for? Well, I just found a use. <laughs> we are going to squeegee the rest of this Mod Podge and get things down with as few lumps and bumps as possible. So definitely have a squeegee on hand if you're going to do a full thing of paper, or a brayer, or end a brayer, I should say. There are several lumps in this paper, and I definitely want to get them out. All right, so I finally have all of my pictures and pieces and everything down. It's a massive, huge, huge collage. It says words all over it, like the fruit of the spirit, and it says love, joy, peace, patience. It has faith. It has the Bible verse. It has all kinds of little doodads and bottle caps, and I think it's just awesome. So now I have to go follow the directions of the high gloss finish. Wish me luck. Um, you basically pour two parts together, and I'm just going to follow the directions right on the box. Um, so I'm not going to go through that entire process, I don't think, on camera. We'll see how it goes. Let's see. Let's see how this works for us. So I will start by saying I have all the windows and the doors open, completely open, in the house. And the Mod Podge has completely dried. So, just so you know. I'm going to grab the cup that I need, and I'm going to need that, um, scraper spatula again. Red Solo cup. Okay, I got my Red Solo cup, and now I'm going to um, do this. So we'll see how it works out. You're supposed to do half of one and half of the other, and then pour. 
It's going to take 72 hours for a fuel, full, full cure. And I'm using the, the lines on the bottle to get the most even amount I can do. That looks pretty even to me. Now it does say to mix in small batches and don't use any kind of power blender or mixer, but you need to stir it for two minutes. So you just need to follow the instructions on here. Don't do hard, fast mixing. Just do small little blends and go slow. Don't shake it. Just do it slow. Okay, two minutes has passed. I'm gonna start the pouring process in one small area at a time and I'm gonna use my squeegee. And we'll just start over here. And we're just gonna pour it back and forth. Now it says you only have about 20 minutes to work with this. This is gonna look awesome. I can already see it now. This is so cool. This is very cool. Okay everyone, so here's the thing. With this table and with this epoxy glaze that we're using, it says to use a heat torch to get out the excess bubbles. Now, I may not be a man that has all the awesome man tools, but I am a scrapbooker who has some pretty darn awesome crafting tools like this heat gun, and it did work to get out some of the bubbles. I don't have major bubbleage happening, and I think some of it is because of all the extra stuff I have on here. Um, it really has been pretty level, but this does work to get out a few of the bubbles. It's probably not the most recommended thing, but I did see them pop with it. So it works even if you're not a man crafter. I got my girly crafting tools and they're working for me. Let's see. is our first true coat of that glass finish. Now that was $20 for those two bottles and I'm thinking because of the depth of the table I'm gonna to need to go buy a second bottle um, which is totally fine. I'm gonna just fill it in the rest of the way with one more bottle and we're gonna call it a day. All in all this took me about three and a half hours. Now there's about um, well, eight hours of total hardening cure time before I can even add the second coat anyway. So we'll see how it looks when it's all said and done. I think this is pretty awesome though. Thanks guys for watching. See you soon. All right, everyone. So here is day two. This is the second day after it has set and it is a gorgeous, smooth finish. Now, there are a few spots where I have some thicker embellishments. Like I put some sparkle lights in here 
and a couple bottle caps and a few, just a few of the sparkle lights or buttons that are in here weren't completely covered in the one layer thickness. So I probably have to go back and get a second mixture to actually fill up the entire area. Uh, I think the area was just a little too big. I didn't anticipate it right. But other than that, I could still use it just fine. It's a totally beautiful, smooth, smooth finished surface. I love it. I think this turned out great. It's very personal to me um, and our, our family and the kids and I just think it's a really fun reminder and a great kitchen table for this time in our lives and you know we hopefully will have it for a really long time but it's also um, more than just our everyday you know fancy kitchen table and you can always put a tablecloth over it. So like I said there are a few bumps. I didn't do it perfectly but I think that's part of what makes it really awesome too. It makes it really homemade and personal. So I hope you guys really enjoyed. I hope you learned something and feel inspired yourselves. Uh, maybe you can redo a tabletop or you can redo something in your home, a bar stool or a kitchen chair that you were gonna throw away or something like that. Just repurpose it and make it more meaningful to the family. And um, definitely check out that resin. It, was, it worked very well. It set really well. You just had to mix the parts together evenly and just follow the directions. Um, it wasn't the cheapest thing. I, like I said, it was like $20, $22 for the bottle. But for me, this table was already given to me for free. So for $22 bucks for a nice kitchen table that you know we can enjoy as a family, I think it's perfect. All right, guys. Enjoy the moments. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. I decided to go ahead and take you guys in for a closer look at the table uh, with the video camera. I know you guys could already see some of the pictures I posted, especially on Facebook. Um, but, okay, this is kind of looking really straight on, and you can really see, like, that button right there. And a couple sparkle lights are the only thing that didn't quite fit under the resin finish. And you can still see, like, if you look along the edge here, I have quite a bit of depth left that I could go into. Um, but really, I think it's really cute. So you guys can take a tour here and see I have some Jenny Bolin, um, that's the Faith Bingo cards. There's a picture of the kids. I put, like I said, there's sparkle lights in here. And I'm sorry for the light overhead. Um, but there is, um, mini, Megan with mini stickers, puzzle pieces, Tim Holtz, um, tags, the Grateful was cut out from my silhouette. Um, the glitter, I love the glitter in here. You guys can see closer some of that glitter. That is from the Mod Podge that had a glitter in it. And I coated the entire thing. There's the word shine, believe. There's a flattened bottle cap. Um, there's some really cool, these are from, um, those are from Pink Paisley. They're um, like corkboard, printed corkboard pieces that were really cool. These are the Wrap Me in Chocolate Thickers, and you can see they kind of varied in color a little bit once the, um, they got more of like a wood grain look once the, um, what you would call it, the resin like hit it, got it wet. And you can also see there's some color variances here. That is from where I didn't completely seal the underneath of the table with Mod Podge. So that's a mistake that I made. You want to make sure you have the entire base completely coated in the Mod Podge first, then cut, completely coat the paper in Mod Podge, and you won't have those color variances because most of it, you don't see color variances. There's just a few splotches. So like right there and right there and over in that corner, you can see some color variances. So all in all, I think it's really cool. We put some I put some Scrabble tiles in here. So you can see it says love in Scrabble tiles. There's another bingo card that says home. Another cute picture of the kids. There's a Coca-Cola bottle cap. I love my Coke bottle caps. I think they're cute. So the word enjoy. Younger pictures of the kids. All kinds of good stuff. So thank you guys again for watching. I really appreciate it that you guys follow and subscribe and follow above rubies and everything that I, all the crazy adventures that I put you through. So enjoy and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.